Let's continue, we are going to Benfi. To the opening of the Benfi Festival. Our motorcade slowly made its way towards the magnificent Benfi High Art Center. Light was falling and the festival was about to begin. I flipped through the brochure that had been given us at the hotel. On the front page there was the face of Burton Leste. Oh, he's, he's a member of our party. Yes. The mayor of Enrica. Oh yeah, he's going to hold the speech. And uh, we uh, said to our wife that he cannot, that she cannot hold the speech right now because he needs to do the speech. Oh, I remember this. Yes. Okay. And yeah, <laughs> we've been personally invited to make tonight's opening speech. The Benfi Festival was one of the biggest events of the year. It originally marked the start of the annual religious pilgrimage. A weeks-long journey still undertaken by devout nourists. Oh, that's a religion. But today it was better known as a cultural celebration that drew thousands of revelers to the city. There were film screenings, concerts, theater and dance performances, art wow. exhibitions and celebrity studded nightly galas. Opening ceremonies were broadcast on TV and watched by millions. As the car slowed, a coterie of reporters and security guards rushed to meet us. I turned my attention to Monica. As I refused her request to make the opening speech, her attitude towards me had changed. She now only spoke to me if I asked her a question, or if it was something important concerning the children. It's time we're gonna get a talk. Yes. 1. Say nothing. 2. <laughs> are you still angry about my decision? 3. Will you ever forgive me? I told you my reasons. Yeah. I know, and I understand. I clearly did not want to pursue this topic any further. As soon as Serge opened the door, we were enveloped by the roar of the crowd. The next few minutes were a blur of handshakes, photos and reporters' questions. The onlookers cheered as we walked the red carpet to the newly built art center. We followed the guards through the cavernous white halls until we came to a set of arch doors leading to the auditorium. We waited aside as security did a quick sweep of the area, then headed in. I've been asked to make a quick set of remarks introducing uh, Kurt and Leste. I beckoned Monica to join me on the podium. I'm going to find my seat. Yeah. <laughs> Monica brushed past me, took her seat in the front row and crossed her arms. She is not happy. She's not speaking the truth no. to us and we are, we are going to tell her that she needs to speak the truth and otherwise she can go away. Uh, I walked alone to the podium. I spoke for just a minute uh, reading a paragraph my speechwriter had churned out about the importance of the festival and Benfi to Sortent. I included by inviting Kurt and Lesti, the Major of Andrika, to the podium. I stepped down and joined Monica in the front row. Her arms were still folded. Welcome to the first day of the Benfi Festival. I paused for a moment at the crowd cheer. His eyes briefly met mine. <laughs> look away? <laughs> Why would I look away? This is a night for the people of Benfi, indeed for the people of Swordland, to put aside their differences and come together and... Yet, as we unite for the festivities, we must remember real... Oh, you're cutting out again. Do you mean to repeat it? Yeah, let oh, me change the region to, uh, there we go. to yeah. the East Coast. Hello? Okay. Yeah. It is better. Yet, as we unite for the festivities, we must remember the real reason we are gathered here. The crowd fell silent. The people were giving their full attention to what he had to say. This festival was founded around the principles of our cherished region, n religion, nurity. Yet over the years, it has been severed from its sacred roots and become something else, something more perverse. Ooh. An excuse for public drunkenness and grotesque displays of the flesh. An occasion for young women to parade their bodies and engage in less lascivious behavior. As he went on, I could see Monica become increasingly agitated. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
what in the hell is he talking about? Lascivious behavior? I never heard that word before. What century does he think we live in? <laughs> L lascivious behavior. I think it's sexing behavior. Okay. <laughs> Quiet. <I've heard> <laughs> <the word. laughs> or two, I don't know. Just let it be. Or three, pretend not to hear her. No, you cannot do that to, to your wife. You cannot pretend to not hear her. Shh, quiet. I don't know, just let it be. Monica turned back watching the speech, a frown on her face. Perversion hidden under the guise of art is not benefiting the beautiful city of... I was becoming restless. Many of the younger attendees were murmuring in disagreement, while a few of the <sighs> older ones were nodding vigorously. As I said, perversion hidden under the guise of art is not be enough. <laughs> the hall fell, fell silent. Monica rose and continued. Mr. Leste, it is not it is not young women who are a disgrace to this fine festival, but you, you're in your backwards, puranical, pur puritanical attitudes, which have been holding this country back for far too long. <laughs> Monica, sit down. Shh, you're making a fool of yourself. <laughs> no, I think she is right. Two, shh, Monica, please sit down. No, I'm going to watch this unfold. Who am I to do <laughs> something? We are, we are, uh, not the we are gonna open anything. a bag of popcorn. <laughs> Monica turned to, to face the audience, speaking loud enough to be heard without a microphone. Women of Swordland, we must not let people like Mr. Lisse use religion as a justification to demean and oppress us. Our time has come. Chuckled oh. grasp ran through the crowd. A few people rose and applauded, and Curtin Lester waited to speak. I think Miss Rain is forgetting her place. Oh, no. <laughs> what do you think my place is, Mr. Lestey? The kitchen? This <laughs> festival is not about your retrograde traditions. We are living in modern times now. It's 1954. It's very modern times. 1954. Yes. You know that there's and internet it, and... Oh, well, go, continue. Uh-huh. Cell phones. And it isn't your, your place to decide how the people of Benfi, especially the women, should be celebrating their own festival. Do nothing. Do nothing. Not. Do nothing. <laughs> Look at the podium to see Lester's piercing gaze on me. There would surely be a price to pay for this. <laughs> Mr. President, could you please control your wife before she embarrasses herself any further? Monica, get to your goddamn seat! Dude, Monica, we've been over this. This is not the time. Sit <laughs> down, please. Two, or three. I'm so sorry about this, Mr. Lester. Please finish your speech. Or, you know that... You know what, Curtin? My wife is absolutely right. Well, my wife is right. Mm hmm. <laughs> of course, it's right. Uh, how can we not how do four? How powerful is this man? Yeah, I and mean, how, how powerful we, is this man? He's how really can that we not powerful. Do four? <laughs> Monica looked at me, surprise registering on her face. Thank you, Anton. I turned to Curtin. But we will take up her concerns at a later time. Please finish your speech. <laughs> Two, now, please, get your speech over with already. Your talk was to give an opening speech, not a moral lecture. That is true. I think three is the three. truest. I will finish my speech if you allow it, Mr. President. Should we let him go? I don't know. I don't know, actually. Could be... You could ask him too. Yeah. But I don't... I turned around to look at the crowd. The people immediately started booing Curtin. He ignored him and continued with his speech. Ben Fee has always been a beacon of culture, tradition, and religion. Many battles have been fought over this precious city. Army after army has tried to claim it for their own, but we fought back and won each time. We stand here thanks to the strong men who were able to protect their families, their lands, their way of living. Every day, 
I praise God that we have succeeded so far. Scattered applause broke out from some of the older members of the audience. I leaned over to Monica. He's a bit extreme, but he is right. We owe everything to God. Ooh, he sounds more like a priest than a politician. I praise God he is only allowed to speak for another two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do free. Let's get some humor. <laughs> she still has a short laugh. Yet the traditions that form the very fabric of our society are being tested, even as I speak. Uh oh. Looked at pointly at Monica. Ugh. We must stay true to our values so that Sordlin can prevail, so that Benfi can prevail. With these at the forefront, I am convinced that Sordlin will continue to be the greatest nation in the world. I ignite every single one of you to celebrate our roots and our traditions at this holy Benfi festival. I hereby declare the festival open. Praise God, praise Sordlin, praise Benfi. A more oh, a Morgna Westcore. Back turns is there. Most of the people in the hall finished the decades old saying, including me. Monica's lips moved, but she didn't say the words out loud. He exited the stage as the band struck up the official festival anthem. I spent the rest of the evening alternately watching the festivities and conversing with local politicians. By the time we got back to the hotel, I was exhausted. Thanks to the festivities still raging outside, the sound of Monica tossing and turning beside me, I couldn't sleep at all. Well, we still have one economical development, Stripe. We are still not bankrupt. One is better than zero, yes. One is better than zero. Now that's some positivity. That's fantastic. Yes. Valen deploying special forces to Vernon. So we are? the president of Oh they are. Valen. This country. Oh wait, where was it? Geopolitical. Now that the city of Vernon put under curfew along with seven other towns in the northeast of the country. The Visic army has deployed specially trained military forces to the combat to combat the militant organization British Freedom Front. Wayland has increased its efforts in fighting terrorism with aerial campaigns and ground operations targeting the British Freedom Front militants and their hidden bases. This operation will surely have consequences for the region, particularly for the neighboring countries of Lesbia and Rumburg and Sortland, which is a large population of British people living inside this border. This country is now having patrols. Bad things, yes. The refugees of Vernon. Reports from our border and the Wessex city Vernon show that there are about a thousand people running away from the Wessex military forces towards the Swedish border. We are getting flooded by immigrants from Valen. What do we have over here? Protests and looting. Oh. In Nargis, please report that the violence has been minimized and the situation is mostly under, under control outside the big cities. Yikes. And we have a report in Deir. The Workers' Party of Ludia spokesman Eyal has condemned the decision to sign the Religious Harmony Bill, organized a huge rally in the city of Deir to protest the newly signed law. The protest has pulled in thousands of people from many different political movements. Local police report that they are watching the situation closely and so far no attempts to incite violation have occurred. That is going to happen. We are going to go to war with the yeah. British. We're Downtime at right home. Up. It felt like eternity since the Benfi festival had it really only less than 24 hours. I was at home now drinking afternoon coffee on my balcony. A stack of newspapers lay by my side. I picked them up one by one, reading and re-reading re the articles about the festival. Some of the newspapers were, were merciless against Monica for interrupting Burton during his speech. A few even called for her to be, to be barred from political matters. Others expressed their support. In any event, I was relieved that the incident hadn't reflected too badly on me. I was putting the last newspaper down and Monica joined me on the balcony. 
Listen, can we talk for a bit? What is this about the news? I know what you're going to say. Two, gesture for her to sit down. Or three, of course, what is it? Let's do three. Monica sat and pickled up the nearest newspaper. She pointed to a particularly insulting headline from the front page. I never in a million years would have wished for this, Anton. I just wanted to thank you for supporting me and apologize for creating such a spectacle. All I wanted was to bring the people of Sorland together the way you are able to, but not like this. Her eyes were getting moist. A single tear fell onto the newsprint. If you are going to succeed in this, you have to be stronger. I know you can be. It's okay, everything is under control. 3. Wipe her tears away. Or I did warn you, but you were always stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do 4? Hmm. Yeah. Let's do it. Because, yeah, she, she, she didn't listen. I know. I am sorry, but you were right. I am stubborn. Perhaps the festival wasn't the proper form to air my views on women's rights, but I still need to do this, Anton. I want to officially adopt this cause as first aid to be able to work on reforms, attend meetings, rally support among female politicians. I know this is something you're passionate about as well. Can I count on you? Of course, my love. I'm looking forward to, to working closer together. Or no. Get your chance. I won't leave anything to chance anymore. No, I will work together. Oh, Anton. This means so much to me. Oh, Anton. Monica hugged me tightly, and I felt some of the past day's tension melt away. Thank you. Noise came from the balcony door. We turned our heads to see Deanna standing there. Mama, I'm hungry. Go to the kitchen, baby. Let's go to the kitchen, baby. Oh, yeah, it's oh, you. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to the kitchen, baby. We'll make Papa the best snack ever. Yeah. They left the balcony and returned half an hour later with a large cookie. You know, had cookie that is from the Dutch word koekje. Diana had written my oh, name on the icing on it. As I sipped my coffee and nibbled the cookie, I thought that I had made the right choice. Things were going to get harder, but at least my life at home was somewhat peaceful. At least we can be at home. What do we have here? The highway is still not done. No. Economic report. Do we need to watch this? Uh, na -na -na -na. The recession is deepening and the financial system is headed towards a potential collapse if we don't take serious action. This all said that the situation was dangerous. And the United Container access to the Conrad base. The Soviets are now putting their ships over here, guys. What could possibly go wrong yep. with that? I see Nothing. no problem. They are here to, to, to peacefully put their battleships in our, in our docks. That's, yeah, of course. And we have a news post. Oh yeah, the Benefi Festival. Uh, we, we know that. And then we have one left in... Close to the Valen border. I bet it's going to be something good. Oh. To determine the current situation of the military and its spending policy, we had a meeting in the White Room. Peter, Vulcan and Josef were seated. General Vulcan, Mr. Lancia, let's start with the briefing. I still smell whiskey. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Vice President. We have prepared a briefing to convey further details about the current situation of our military. First off, we have received an updated communication from the United Continent Military Command. Despite my very vocal disagreement with the plan, their warships are approaching the Conrea Naval Base as we speak. Continent warships in Con Conrea, I thought I would never see the day. But you're keeping them under close surveillance. A single wrong move and we will... 
<laughs> we will keep you updated. A single wrong move and we will strike back. We will keep you updated. One, do not cause any trouble. Do you understand? Two, do your best to make them feel at home. Lol. Three, good mix. <laughs> sure you keep an eye on. Or ensure that they do not forget which country's soil they are on. Yeah, four. Of course, Mr. President. Now, let's move on to our military. Which branch would you like to know about? What is the situation of our army? According to the latest reports from Camp Strongarm, currently we field three armies totaling to approximately 400,000 active troops. Which is a good amount. The real issue we are having is the quality, not the quantity. What Just is the quality of equipment status? That. Our army is quite outdated by today's military standards. Most of our equipment is two decades old. To make up for our lack of modern military equipment, we resort to a large number of soldiers, which is not really a long-term solution. I have been trying hard to reduce the effects of this problem. It is very problematic. We need more funding towards modernization, otherwise our army will be seen as weak. Where exactly is our army deployed at right now? The first army is stationed at the Lesbia and Wayland borders to protect the way into the central regions of Swordland. The second army, our strongest force, has been situated by the Rumberg border. The second army has a large mountain commando force and is the best equipped army because they are facing Rumberg. The third army near the Agnolian border in Colsaria is facing Valgsland. Due to our bitter past, we generally keep a coastal defense first, although many years ago the decimation of our fleet is still not forgotten. Uh, how do we compare to other armies? Rumberg fields about six armies, amounting to a million soldiers. Lesbia, five armies, which which amount to 800,000 soldiers, Vogsland field one army of about 140,000 soldiers. Oh my god. Wayland field an army amounting to 100,000 soldiers, Agnolia fields two armies with a total of 200,000 soldiers. The sheer size of Rumberg's army is because of their forced conscription laws. Due to their massive gold reserves, reserves they are able to afford it. On the other hand, the Lesbian army is the most advanced, followed by the Vagslagian army. Both of these countries put lots of money in modernizing of their military. Because they want another branch. Very well. Uh, what is about our navy? Our navy currently constitutes 59 ships with a total of 60,000 sailors and support staff. As you know, these ships are commanded from our main naval base in Coin... Conriat, Conriat, where our flagship SN Rainen is docked. And how does it compare to the others? Our navy is dwarfed by the side of the Volkslagian navy, which has 194 ships, and the Gnolian navy that has 81 ships. You cannot do anything about these. Mm -mm. We only surpass Lesbia in terms of our navy, as they have less than 30 ships. As you see, the situation is dire, but the solution is not just more ships. To make a truly better navy, we need to equip our ships with modern radar and sonar systems. More outdated ships wouldn't mean, wouldn't mean much. And where do we patrol right now? We are patrolling in the Mar we are patrolling the Martian Sea, the Grey Strait, and the Antisean Sea. Our navy protects all our coastal regions, however, to make sure that we are not thinning out our defense, we prioritize certain regions over others, like Greater Hullsword. We have to patrol the routes that are close to the shipping lanes, especially Markian Sea and Grey Strait. The amount of cargo that goes through this that area is eye-opening. Another thing to note is that, that 
is after the takeover of Helsland, where our Navy led incursion operations to protect Agnolia, we also take part in some joint Navy drills as well. Um... Other branches of the armed forces. Which uh, one? Our air force, then. Our air force currently have 410 planes in the inventory, out of which only 140 are jet planes that are not in great condition. 330,000 pilots and support staff work in the air force, and they are commanded from the Mark Air Force Base in Air Reloy. Uh, let's see. Uh, how does the Air Force work together with other military branches? The Air Force is trained as an independent tactical support branch, which means that it assists other branches but doesn't collaborate. This does cause some issues like friendly fire and miss close air support God. opportunities. There are ways to improve collaboration with joint operation rooms, something to think about, surely. How experienced are our pilots? Our pilots have average experience. They have a total of 450 hours flight time with their craft before they are qualified. This gives them more than enough time to get used to it. This is low compared to 100,001 1,500 hours in other countries like Arcasia, United, Guantana, Lesbia, and even Valksland. Normally, the hours per pilot should be higher, but due to the lack of funding, we can't increase in training times. Fuel costs are rather high. What are operational capabilities? Our planes can bomb targets within a f within 400 km radius of their airfield. They have medium range and semi-effective nighttime bombing cap capabilities. At any time, we can field seven air wings compared to a total of 130 aircraft that can operate in combat duty. This is enough to subdue most targets. In terms of our bombing capability, we have an average of 100 meters of precision. This is not great, but it's still within the effective radius of the bombs. I'd like to know about the other branches. Any specific one you want to know about? Lol. Actually, <laughs> let's move on. No more... Let's. He cleared his throat. <clears throat> the Ministry of Defense is disappointed about the lack of additional funds. We know that keeping the same budget for the military would cause some concern from you. Well, the military is important, but it's not a priority right now. Two, resources were more needed elsewhere. The military has always been well funded. I'd willing to support the military in other ways. Let's come to an agreement. Well, maybe we can mm. get an agreement. We request any support we can get at this point. The military circle has been moody after they heard the decision. We expected more. We know that there have been high hopes, but the president has made his decision to prioritize other branches. We are stuck between a rock and a hard place without money. The military suffers from budget overextension or to keep up with other countries. <sighs> no use complaining now, Vulcan. Let's look at what we can do with what we have. I have been planning to improve the quality of the armed forces by buying better military equipment. How would that be possible without funds? It wouldn't be. There is, there one, is way. one way. If we relieve half the forces, they create enough of a surplus that we can invest in new equipment. To uh, one go on to relieving half the armed forces sound risky at best and destructive at worst. Let him talk. Falcon's eyes widened. We are barely matching the size of our neighbors, while the other, well, the other half of our army is two times bigger than ours. How on earth would discharging half the armed forces and buying new gear solve our defense issues? One well, Falcon raises valid questions. 
a better equipped smaller for is much more preferable. Let's do one. Quality over quantity is the right strategy for the future of warfare. Having a large force doesn't necessitate superiority. The reduction of the army would cause more unemployment, which would hurt the administration. What do you think, Mr. President? Leave it untouched. There is no reason to break a working structure and risk defense weakness. To reduce size and buy better equipment with surplus. Let's reform the army and create a smaller, better equipped force. I think I'm not going to do it. I think I will leave it how it is. I mean, they, it's small, but it is it is doing the, the job right at the moment. Yeah. I'm not going to change anything know. with this. The Swordish Armed Forces will stand strong. We'll maintain our structure. Unfortunate, but as you wish, Mr. President. Joseph and Falcon looked at each other. That will be all for today, then. Good work, everyone. Have a good day. Yeah, good work, everyone. I'd like to extend my thanks for your attendance. It concluded as the sun set over the concrete jungle that was Holzor. Well. We have a codex entry. We still don't have a codex entry. Ah. <sighs> What is happening over here?